was uh, for 25 years member of uh, parliament and minister. And uh, now I could say that uh, I'm more involved uh, in uh, sports and peace. The movement and uh, IOC, uh, International Olympic Committee, I'm the vice president of the foundation of the International Olympic Committee. And being a politician, we are always a politician. Anyway, so uh, it's a, a great pleasure. Thank you very much to be here again. Uh, it's my third time and always uh, it's very interesting to be with uh, students, with you ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, especially with this topic about the human rights. And uh, well, it's a difficult approach speaking about human rights, uh, speaking about promoting culture diplomacy with human rights and human rights with uh, refugees, which is my topic. So the notions of uh, cultural diplomacy and human rights are parallel and uh, overlap to a significant degree. Greece, from where I hail, has uh, contributed with firmly peaceful characteristics through its age-old history via its presence on the world stage to preserving and consolidating the close relationship between culture and human rights, a relationship that is vital to stable and secure relations and common courses among peoples in a spirit of democracy, equality, security, economic development, and political equality. Moreover, the example of the Greek Revolution of 1821 as an ideological extension of the American and French revolutions expresses exactly this dedication to the rights of the individual as freedom, respect for values, justice, dignity, and resistance to violence. In another reading, however, it also reflects the foundations for the evolution of Hellenic culture over the last two centuries of the modern era, during which human rights have been a basic condition for all cultural production. Of course, any national, economic, or social problems during the space of these two centuries were faced uh, almost uh, invariably by that, which is reflected in the country's presence throughout its modern history. That is, respect for human dignity, dedication to the highest good of freedom, and to the ideals represented by democracy, peace, and the Olympic spirit. I insist in the Olympic spirit, and I always add that, because the Olympic ideals are not sports ideals. The Olympic ideals are humanitarian values and ideas. That's why I, I add to the values of human rights also the Olympic culture, which is a kind of uh, sport, uh, Olympic culture. So uh, this is the spirit. Greek culture, in all of its manifestations, was and is anthropocentric, strives for balance and condemns unilateralism. So, within the long established environment, based on cultural data and social uh, stereotypes, we are being called upon today to respond to a fundamental question that concerns the potential for promoting human rights through cultural diplomacy throughout the world. In other words, we are trying to pinpoint through the example of Greece, whether methodical use of the traits of achievements of one country's culture can contribute to the exercising of an international relations policy and the strengthening of human rights. Naturally, the 
answer is affirmative. But the success of the endeavor clearly assumes a consistent cyclical approach through the factor of a given state of affairs. That is, is it possible today in a highly globalized world, in a Europe facing a very serious migration issue, and in a Greece with a constant influx of refugees for human rights to be recognized and for refugees to be provided with a material and intangible culture heritage to strengthen the specific human rights, is it? Big question. What is the answer? This is difficult to say. Proceeding directly to the presentation of the data provided to us by the contemporary example of an international level, we argue from the outset for the necessity of preserving and strengthening a policy based on cultural production and uh, heritage. It is already shared characteristic of powerful countries of the world like the United States, Britain, Germany, France, uh, Japan, that uh, they give priority to their culture and its dimension. Without a doubt, they have incorporated culture into the exercising of foreign policy for the purpose of promoting, disseminating their language, pursuing better communication and understanding among states and citizens. Moreover, the broader cognitive processes of the interaction of peoples through promotion of cultural values, letters, arts, and social and economic data contribute to the promotion of democratic institutions, stability, cooperation, respect, and in the end, the guaranteeing of uh, human rights. Thus, we can understand the contribution of Hellenic culture to shaping of diplomacy and the various international relations. Without a doubt, the universality of Hellenic culture is a connective tissue for determining common heritage and historical ties with other countries in both the West and the East. The dialogue between this culture is embodied in cultural diplomacy as each dynamic cultural otherness of given peoples is rendered a stakeholder in the broader par human scope and international arena of the interaction of cultures. In our case, Greece attaches special importance to cultural diplomacy as a means for charting foreign policy, bringing peoples closer together and promoting and safeguarding human rights. Gradually, in recent decades, Greece has retreated from a long-term introversion and strengthen what are now global ties, participating in international organization, hosting major culture events, capitalizing on its culture resources, formulating policy. And it is a center for the diffusion of the timeless uh, Olympic values, especially following the 2004 Athens Olympics, uh, on which I had uh, the opportunity to work with as a minister responsible for the Olympic Games uh, of uh, Athens. Through the above uh, clarifications, we can already move to our main issue of concern, that is human rights in Europe and their dispute implementation with regard to this large uh, number of a shifting human population, the refugees. In this case, the foundations of human rights for the modern area were led by the events in Paris 
1789, when after the revolution had prevailed in Paris and throughout most of France, power passed essentially into the hands of the middle class, which was a, a revolutionary nature. And you know, the most important declaration of the rights of men and of the citizens, the greatest written monument to the French Revolution, men are born and remain free and equal in uh, rights. The declaration stressed at the time when most people were slaves, serfs, and the slave trade was flourished. Of course, the above uh, references are only an introductory rendering of the broad framework of the values of human rights, which exist in the modern era and uh, is uh, a precondition for the smooth functioning of institutions and for the state. Light. However, this is for the human rights, light for the human rights. However, approaching the issue in closer detail, we could not but incorporate these values into the wider framework of culture, of letters, and of values. Moreover, good humanity chart is cultural course if citizens did not function under the protection of the power and influence of human rights? Another big question. As such, we can see that the recognition of the dignity and the equal rights of all persons is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. At the same time, contempt for the rights of men led to acts of barbarity that are an outrage to the human conscience and the prospect of a world where people will enjoy freedom of expression, a religious faith liberated from fear, particularly in our time, emerges as the highest endeavor of how humankind. In any case, however, it is of particular importance on the one hand for human rights to be protected for a justice system art, and on the other, the development of friendly relations among relations to be promoted. And fundamental to the above is the contribution of the United uh, Nations, the initiatives of which are pervaded by faith in the fundamental rights of the individual, the dignity and value of the human personality, the equality of the rights of men and women, and social progress in the context of a broader freedom. So, we understand from the above that human rights are basic institutional tool for promotion and development of culture diplomacy and that they are a necessary condition for the successful interpretation of culture diplomacy. There is a dialectical relationship of independency between culture and human rights. In the same direction, they point up our modern era's need to implement and to promote human rights with regard to the refugee issue. In other words, for cultural diplomacy to be implemented in an ideal manner, there has to be a respect for human rights which are being disputed in the case of refugees. This is the reality. I mean, my speech is about, has a, a philosophical uh, dimension, 
but it's the reality as well. The above clarifications allow us to move on to the description of this movement of refugees with regard to both Europe and in particular Greece. There is no question that migration has become a controversial issue for the European Union, which with the institutions it has created is dealing with the issue, but to the degree that it can, is dealing with uh, the issue, as I said before, to the degree that it can deal. Europe has to come to terms with itself and the reality of the refugee issue and the revision of its legislation on asylum and migration under the umbrella of strengthening human rights. This is the only way to change the nature of the refugee issue. As the data from authorities and international humanitarian organizations have shown, migration flows have increased significantly in recent years. Violation of migrants and refugees, human rights on Europe's border is unfortunately a reality. It is estimated that at least 23,000 people have lost their lives since the year 2000, while trying to reach some country in Central Europe. And the European Union, in order to defend its borders, funded relevant monitoring system, as in Greece and in Bulgaria as well, to fortify their borders at the funded reception and detention centers for migrants and refugees. Regarding the later observation, it is advisable for us to go further due to the grave importance of the issue in the case of Greece, which was called upon as the southeastern border of the European Union to manage an unexpected influx of refugees coming mostly from a Syria shattered by war in the beginning by Syria. There are other refugees or illegal migrants. So this was in the beginning. And as we know, the reception points were 10 Greek islands in the Aegean. One of the islands was by far the main gateway for refugees as it has received half a million people. And then there are Samos, Hios, Lesbos, other islands. Can you imagine an island with uh, 7,000 inhabitants having every day 7,000 coming refugees in this, this island? Ev by day, every day, more than 7,000. According to the latest data from the Coordinating Organ for Managing the Refugees Crisis, there are currently about 60,000 refugees in Greece, in the islands, and they cannot move, it's not legal to move from there through the institutions, the European institutions. This data also takes into account 6,600 refugees who are being housed in rented spaces by the United Nations, and uh, an estimated 1,500 persons being hosted outside organized structures. So within this environment, the image of a Greece that has always been humanitarian, that respects the rights of refugees and migrants, and through cultural diplomacy, supports human rights in general, appears somewhat problematic. The dramatic increase in the number of refugees and applicants for asylum on the Aegean islands is refugees and other people that they are applicants for asylum. If they are, do the application of asylum, you cannot send them somewhere else. You have to, these people have to stay 
in the country. They don't want to stay, they want to leave. So you, you get these people through the law, the European institutions captured in a, in a country in which they don't want to stay. So all this led to the questioning of a system of first reception. The, cell, the shelters, as was to be expected, were insufficient for the many refugees and migrants reaching Athens and Greece where hundreds of people, including families, stayed for a number of days and nights on the city squares. In the same direction, issues of compliance with human rights are also raised at refugee reception and residence centers, when, for instance, within the centers themselves, the rights to move freely and work are not upheld, not by the Greek, institutions, but by the European legislation for the refugees. Taking the above into consideration, we realize that there are a number of problems in relation to the refugee issue. There can be no doubt that the implementation, the implementation of human rights with regard to refugee flows is basic for the practice and encouragement of cultural diplomacy. Especially nowadays, when all of Europe is dealing with the refugee issue, upholding human rights seems more vital than ever. What's more, the exercising of cultural diplomacy presupposes the consolidation of human rights. Given that culture is a complex term that crystallizes the timeless sum of values, moral, <coughs> customs, knowledge, and experience that are a function of the historical, social, and anthropogeographical horizon on which they upfold over time. On the other hand, culture is both an object of protection of human rights and a tool for the promotion in conclusion, one could argue that culture and human rights constitute one and the same ideal, which all peoples must pursue, so that each member of society attempts through education to develop respect for these human rights and freedoms. Through progressive measures, national and international, ensures their effective implementation, not only among the people of the European Union, it's more serious, the problem of the refugees, it will be worldwide. So it's not only the problem of European Union, but it will be among the people in regions where the migration process is underway, is coming. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you very much, Madam Tuk, for your wonderful presentation. And if you let us, I would like to invite our audience for question and comment. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Uh, we are uh, really uh, grateful to the government of Greece for having been under a lot of stress in uh, accommodating these refugees despite smaller space. And what you did at the initial stage is really commendable. Thank you for Greece government for what they have done. What we would like to say is, what has the Greek government done to rehabilitate these refugees, to get them employment, to get them a better life than what they had? Yes. So, as I told you before, uh, most, all I could say, of the refugees, they didn't want to stay in Greece. They liked to go, for example, in the beginning was Germany. I mean, Germany housed about a million in the beginning. And we have to think what Europe 
in, as a whole said in the beginning, the borders are open for the refugees. And then suddenly we had other countries in Europe that they said, no, we don't want to have refugees in our soil. And even Germany, she said, Germany also had about uh, a million, as I said, and now it's difficult. The, the, the borders in Greece are closed now. So uh, what we did in Greece is that really we, we host these uh, people through the legislation, European legislation. And also, you know, it was if you don't, uh, you are not there to see what happened. You can't believe it if you saw uh, uh, um, waves, a flow of people in, in small boats with red life jackets, babies, women crying, coming from uh, the, the, the seashore of Turkey. And they were coming every day, every day during the night. And people in the islands, you know, during all the night, because they used to come in the night, they were in the seashore with uh, the lamps, with food. You know, one uh, of uh, the bakers of uh, the island of Lesbos has been decorated last week in the European Union because he gave every day uh, more than 100 kilos of bread to the refugees. All this happened, the Greeks, really, they support these people. And, uh, what we do is that uh, we made uh, all the people that they are now in Greece because they cannot go to other countries of Europe. It's not allowed now. Um, they go, the, the young uh, children go to school. Uh, we try the, the, the hot spots, as we say, the points that they have to live there. Uh, we try to make a better kind of life to have a, a, a quality of life. It's not easy. It's not easy. And I'll tell you another dimension. You have seen what happened to Calais in France. Huh? There are a lot of the NGOs that they help a lot. But there are NGOs, you know, they are not all registered. In the beginning, the first months in Greece, thousands of NGOs came. Nobody knew who these people were. And these NGOs, the European Union, gave to the money to, to NGOs to do the job. We didn't know what, what these people were, are. And also, they stressed the refugees not to let, leave the campus in the way that it was, uh, as in Calais, uh, as, our, as you saw, I'm sure you, you, you saw in the television the, these unbelievable uh, pictures from people with the rain, in the mud, with the babies, the, the men, women, the, the women gave birth to, to, to babies. I mean, where are the human rights? You always speak about human rights and culture. Oh, come on. Human right is not... Uh, to can stay in your country and not have the war. Go back. Why to have bombs? Why to have a war? Did they live there? Why? This is human right. If I want to stay in my country, I want to stay. This is my, for me, number one human right. So these people were there, and we wanted to put all these people to hotels or to other places. And the NGOs, they didn't let them go. It was a propaganda. They said, no, you have to stay here to push because uh, the mankind is going to, to watch what happens. And things will change. They will open the borders. This is a problem now. This is the only thing they want. So this is what we are doing. Of course, we are, nothing is ideal. We, we must be... Uh, you know, say, speak firmly. No, it's not, a, it's not an ideal case. But of course, they start now having jobs, uh, and especially the children at schools. 
all the hotspots we have uh, uh, with uh, baby candles, uh, medication, food, wow. everything. But, well, we can talk for hours about that because now the, the Syrians is not the majority. They are from Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, uh, Somalia, uh, Africa. Um, they are not refugees, they are immigrants. And uh, we have the treaties through the, uh, I mean, illegal migrants. They have to go back. But when they tell them to go back, they ask for asylum. When they ask for asylum, they have to stay there. And it has to be examined. So that takes time, you know. That takes time. So people stay there, they want to leave, and then we start having problems inside the, the camps between uh, other religions. Uh, or they have, a, it's a, their mentality. I mean, uh, uh, we have violence. Uh, we have a violence there, but uh, for, for us, for you, for me, or for other people, this kind of violence is its very something that we do not accept. But for their culture, it is acceptable in some cases. So it's a very difficult issue anyway. Yes, I see many hands, but would like to suggest to uh, yes. approach. Yes, just one. Yes. OK. Uh, uh, if you uh, ask, we'll just facilitate. Here, yes, one final question. Um, many European countries. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it OK? Many European countries uh, refuse to welcome refugees uh, and nationalism, right extremism is rising. Uh, some might argue that it's because of uh, economic contest, uh, like austerity, uh, yet in Greece there are lots of uh, economic uh, difficulties mm -hmm. and you are facing more as you said in your presentation, uh, more flow of refugees, and yet yes, you are showing Greece a lot is more solidarity. One in Italy through. Mm. So, so uh, what makes the difference, as opposed to many countries, that you are facing more economic difficulties and yet showing more solidarity? I'm sorry. Uh, look, uh, yes, you mentioned, and we know that Greece faces uh, a big uh, economical crisis. Where I'm a politician, I'm not going. I don't want to get into politics, but it's uh, a stupid policy uh, concerning uh, Greece' uh, economical crisis. Uh, I mean, uh, well, first of all, I have to tell you that I come from the right uh, wing in uh, politics. But uh, because when I speak, many maybe you think that I'm uh, in, uh, in the left or the <laughs> extreme left or no. No, I'm in the right. So center right. Uh, this is, I'll tell you why, because... Uh, I do think that uh, uh, is uh, the wrong, the wrong policy for the economical crisis of Greece. IMF, Europe, uh, Eurozone, I mean, you do not struggle people with taxes. What you need to be out of the crisis is development, and development doesn't come with taxes. Development come if you have less taxes to the industry and to help. 
you don't cut the pensions of the poor people, because this is what happened, I mean, in the beginning. They cut the pensions. They cut the wages. That means that no money in the market. The banks didn't give the money to the investors. So if you don't have money for the investors, if you don't uh, have money f uh, to consumers, then <laughs> what will be the, 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 the medicine to change that? So, you know, uh, you've seen that uh, although Greece is a country that faces economical problems, we have most of the refugees all over the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. The Mediterranean was for decades, decades, and centuries, was the sea of reconciliation, of civilization. And now Mediterranean became the sea of death. More than so many people have lost their lives have been drawn, the babies, the women, men. So although uh, Greece has, the big flows are coming from Turkey. In that time, in the seashore of Turkey, there are about three million refugees and immigrants that they, uh, they, they wait to come to Europe. Other countries, I, I don't want to really to mention now, but you know what happened and why all this has changed? Because most of the countries, not most of the countries, some countries of in, in Europe, they said, no, we don't want foreigners in our country. We don't, we have a problem, we don't want. And of course, we, we can really feel what happened about uh, rashes, sure, the, extreme right all over the world. You have seen what happened in France with uh, Barry Le Pen, in um, other, uh, other countries even. It's a whole, the whole world is like that. I just flew from uh, New York last night I came. So in, uh, from the States about Trump. They don't uh, speak about anything else. What's going to happen? Is it be extreme or not or whatever? Uh, young generation uh, votes against, not poor, for, against politicians. Yes, but this is bad. What's going to happen after if we don't? There is, the, the, uh, no, no, where is democracy if you don't vote for someone or you vote for someone and you agree or not? There is a majority. What's going to happen? And uh, we can see that in Europe, all the extreme right uh, parties go, uh, they, they have, a, well, I can say that we have this uh, and we don't know what's going to happen. No, we don't. And I believe that uh, this um, refugee, uh, the, this, um, this problem, refugee issue, uh, changes a lot the whole atmosphere in Europe because, of course, we have to say that uh, some of uh, the people that they get through Greece and Italy and, uh, yes, they can be terrorists. Yes, we don't, uh, they, you cannot uh, identify, although we have all this, um, uh, high-tech uh, systems, no system can identify. And you can see the big difference because until a few years ago, we had uh, imported terrorism in Europe. But the last terrorism coup showed that is inside. There are Belgians there, were French or whatever. I mean, people that they was were born in these countries. They had the culture, and this is why it's difficult to say. We speak about human and about uh, cultural diplomacy, 
yes, this is very strong, the cultural diploma. But these people, the people of, I, I saw before, of Hublot and the terrorism and the, what happened in Paris, but they had the French, they had the French culture. They were born there. So it's a turbulent. The world changes. Fanny Pali Petralia. Thank you very much for being with us today.